Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have something really cool to take a look at. This is actually the very first time I've ever had the opportunity to take a review of a Southland Replicas figure, and this is their Diprotodon. This is the only figure I can think of of a Diprotodon. I don't think anyone else has created one that I personally know of. So this figure is really quite, you know, historic, but super exciting at the same time. Because again, it's not every day you can get a species and uh, look at it as like a figure of a species you've never seen a figure of before. And that's super awesome as far as this one goes. A really cool claim to fame, I guess you could say for this guy. But I will say that the overall appearance and quality is really well done on this figure and being my first I actually have this and the thylacine now in my collection of the Southland replicas figures and I'm really quite impressed with the very high quality of the model like it's super well done there's only like a few gripes that I can see with it straight away one of which is very obvious and that's this weird seam that runs down here along the course of the body. It's just not well hidden and incredibly visible. But I mean, once you get past that seam, the overall visual of the model is really beautiful. So let's go ahead, jump straight to a closer look right now. So starting up here at the head sculpt, straight away you can see that it looks beautiful as far as the fur detail goes. And I like that in the face, the fur detail is very, very fine. Like you could see, it's super fine and in some areas even more fine than others like you can still see some of the fur detail right here around the eye but then as you transition down here into like the cheek area like it's almost so fine you can't even pick up on it until you get a really good light and you can't see that that detail is sculpted out it's just really impressively uh, sculpted out in such a very small way beautiful as far as that goes the eye is painted very nicely also given a really nice gloss coat as you can see as I turn it here the eye is shining very realistically you can see the ear sculpted out back here as well as of course the nostrils and the paintwork for the nose area is also quite beautifully done as we have a nice black coloration and it's been dry brushed over making that detail pop really quite nicely you can also see a bit of a glossy paint used on the nose itself which i really do love again adding yet another element of realism to the figure and then once you get here into the mouth you can see those kind of trademark teeth for the animal as well as the tongue sticking up in there and a beautiful paint application inside the mouth i feel like the tones of color used are really nice very realistic tones and you can see as well as that the coloration of the teeth is a really nice kind of a off-white bordering on a yellow so that also has a very realistic appearance to it and everything inside the mouth also has a really nice gloss coat added so it has all sorts of different elements of realism and I was really impressed honestly when I first picked the figure up and had taken a look at it and saw just how nice the actual gloss coat used inside the mouth was it looks really lifelike in person as you lead back up here into the eye area you can see a very nice light gray that kind of borders around the eye stripes out toward the snout the majority of the face is painted with a nice white but there are some transitions between that white some kind of like light grays and some really light browns as you move back further into the body you start to see some scruffier fur pick up and you also see the majority of the body transition to a really nice variation of brown but there's also different variations of browns included you could see like lighter and darker shades that are really subtle as far as the way they're applied like they just transition back and forth pretty much throughout the entire course of this area of the figure again some beautiful detailing as far as the fur and stuff you can see kind of like the throat a little bit right there but you can see how the fur kind of runs down here and gets a little shaggier in the throat region of the diprotodon as you continue to move back into the body you can see some nice bulkiness to the neck as well as some gorgeous looking fur detail some nice creasing and stuff within the fur and skin of the animal as you can see it has its head turned in a left position so it's kind of showing off the movement also in an upward leaning position somewhat again causing the you know wrinkles and stuff up here and then as you reach back here a little further into the body you can see the shoulder blade a little bit some beautiful muscle definition displayed and a really smooth transition from that brown to this light kind of a grayish coloration in the leg and you can see how the fur again is pretty scruffy up here not super scruffy but 
it's a little scruffier but then becomes more fine as you get further down here into the leg but then kind of gets a little bit you know out of whack as we reach the foot you can see the foot looks pretty nice we have some decent looking painted nails with a light gray and we've also got a little bit of dry brushing with a white down here to make the detail there of the legs pop quite beautifully as far as like the fur detail you can see we have a nice white stripe that starts kind of up here near the shoulder area and stripes down into the stomach but you can also see that we transition to a lighter coloration kind of like a light gray for the stomach region with alternate variations of some light grays and stuff throughout which is really cool and you can see again how smooth the transition is from that brown to that light gray you can also see that there's almost like a black that runs along the back of the animal running down the course of the entire spinal column even out onto the tail where it picks back up and covers the majority of the tail there with that black you can see again the beautiful muscle definition displayed in the rear leg of the diprotodon you can see that looks really nice again they've kind of shaded it slightly with some alternate variations of color to really help you pick up on the muscle definition a little nicer and yet again we kind of get that dry brushing as we get closer to the foot the foot looks really nice just like it did on the front leg and then as we move back here you can kind of see how like the fur and skin and stuff is stretching off of the body as it's walking along especially as it has this really long stride this leg is pulling back quite far you can see the skin stretching there and back here as well and you can really see that calf muscle defined right here on the back leg very nicely flexing as it walks along moving over here to the opposing side again more beautiful muscle definition on this leg just like we had seen on the previous side some more absolutely gorgeous looking fur detail throughout i'm honestly so impressed with this figure you can pick up on the hip bone a little bit again the fur gets a little scruffier as you get closer here to the top of the animal and then again more fine when you come down into the stomach region you can see like some variations of whites and you know light grays and stuff as you get closer to the underside of the animal you can also see some of that dark brown actually borders around that white stripe and uh, that also adds a nice element of flashiness to the animal but looking really nice and natural overall i would say and yet again the muscle definition is very nicely defined on this front leg over here as you can see all sorts of variations of browns and stuff making the paintwork look very lifelike as you come down here you can see how this front leg is kind of like scooped up almost like it was like trying to pick something up with the front leg right there and that looks quite nice again the structure and everything the bone structure is beautifully displayed as well as a really nice foot sculpt you can see the nails yet again really nice and carefully painted as we lead back up into the face of our diprotodon you can see how beautiful it looks over here yet again the eye is very lifelike honestly it looks like a real living animal's eye it is so well painted and then the underside does sport even more fur detail throughout that looks just phenomenal no matter where you look at it so much paint variation like you can see lighter shades of orangish browns and stuff down here but the really nice whites kind of like light grays and stuff and you even see pink to the undersides of the feet so there's just so much paintwork added to this figure and an overall incredibly highly detailed sculpt honestly it may be the first diprotodon figure that we've had the opportunity to own but even if it wasn't it would probably still be the best the only thing again that i can pick out on this figure that would be a downside would be this seam except for one other thing and that's not necessarily a downside honestly some people might consider it a downside but i personally don't mind at all it has no effect on me at all but the fact that the figure is actually hollow like you pick it up it's super light you can instantly tell it is a hollow figure and some people don't like hollow figures some people prefer their figures to be you know solid plastic or pvc or whatever but i feel like it doesn't really make a difference to me so the hollow feel and aspect of the model has absolutely no bearing on whether i like it any more so than i would if it were a solid figure it's just beautiful regardless as far as a size goes for a length you were looking at uh, about six and a quarter inches i would say when we hit that tail area length or about 16 centimeters and then for a height to the top of the head about four inches or 10 centimeters for a size comparison there is mr papo t-rex the attack pack colovasaurus and robert muldoon from the mattel jurassic world toy line in comparison to our southlands replica diprotodon and you could see that in comparison to these figures it actually sports a pretty darn impressive size overall like it was much larger when i had pulled it out of the box than i was actually expecting it to be which was a pleasant surprise but again it's not gigantic by any means but still sporting a pretty impressive size overall and of course considering it is a large animal you would expect 
expect it to be decently sized, but that's not always the case, so I was quite pleasantly surprised to see that it does have some pretty good size to it on top of everything. So this Southlands replica, Diprotodon is really, really nice. Like, probably one of the most visually appealing prehistoric mammal figures that I've ever seen, honestly. It is really, really nice looking and super lifelike. If you actually take like a step back and, you know, take a nice wide view of it, especially in the head sculpt, it honestly looks like it's a living animal. And the gloss coat, I think, in the mouth really helps with that. It just overall gives it a really lifelike appearance. And uh, if it didn't have that seam running down the midsection and I was a little bit further back, I would almost, you know, be convinced that it could potentially be a miniature living version of a diprotodon. It is that nicely done. The detailing aspect is very, very well done. There's so much fur detail, so much movement shown in the sculpt throughout and so much minute detailing that it really amps up the overall realism of the figure. But on top of the beautiful detailing aspect, we have some fantastic paintwork. And I'm really impressed with just how nice the actual paintwork is. Like Southland's replica really does a great job of applying paintwork with a realistic fashion. Like there's so many different variations of color and different tones that it looks super lifelike the way that they've painted that. Whereas some companies might just like give it like a solid color and then maybe a little color on the underside and like some spots or something like that. Like they go the extra mile. They put so many different variations of tones of color in some nice dry brushing techniques like airbrushing techniques. There's a lot applied to it, which creates such a more realistic and lifelike appearance. So they definitely should be commended for that fact. The seam in the middle of the animal is an eyesore, that is for sure, but it's not that distracting for me. I don't mind it. It definitely could have been better if it weren't there, but it's not any type of a deal breaker for me because I still absolutely love the figure. The pose is a nice walking pose. That as well is really, really nicely done. The fact that the figure is hollow might sort of be a downside for some, that has no effect on me. I do not mind the hollow figure. And in fact, some of my favorite figures in my collection are hollow, like the big PNSO vinyl models. So that doesn't matter at all to me, but just, you know, something that some people might be interested in. So overall, this is a gorgeous model of an insanely underrepresented species in figure form. So I was so happy to finally have this in my collection. Thanks to my good buddy, Jimmy, who was selling his collection, had you know, given me a great deal on a lot of really cool stuff. So an awesome figure, really recommend picking it up. I think it's actually unfortunately retired now. I don't know that Southland's replica even makes figures anymore. I could be wrong, but it seems like they're kind of slowly disappearing off of the internet. So if you are interested in this, I do believe the Jenkins.com does still have some available. I would recommend picking it up as soon as possible before it does disappear forever. If it is in fact retired, because it's definitely a figure that I feel like is not to be missed. So if you are interested, make sure you check the link in the description. Go buy this fantastic Diprotodon and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.